Good evening. I am not Dr. Lauren Agri. Dr. Agri, the president of Berman University, is at meetings in Oshawa right now for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Canada, which, unbeknownst to us when we invited him, would be the case. So when I emailed him the program, he emailed me back and said somebody else will have to speak on my behalf. And so I invite you in his stead to join with me in our call to praise and worship. You'll find the responsive reading in the bulletin that you were uh, given this afternoon. And if you don't have one, just lean over to the person next to you. I will be reading the light print and I invite you to join with me and throughout the evening by following along with the dark print. Our call to praise and worship is adapted from Psalm 150 and will set the tone for this evening's gathering. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Meditate on his mighty deeds. And praise him according to his immeasurable greatness. Praise him with brass and with trumpet. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with cymbals and bells. Praise him on the organ, on the high-sounding organ. Praise him with voices and with choirs. Let everyone who has breath praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. May you be blessed for our time together this evening. Thank you. 
Good evening and welcome everyone. I am so thrilled to see all of you here. And we are going to have an amazing time together, the musicians and all of you, because you are all musicians as well. It's a whole room full of musicians. So thank you so much for being here. I want to welcome all of you who are uh, joining us in person and also those of you who are watching us online, including a special attendee online, Dr. Kenneth Logan of Andrews University, who is my predecessor and a major mover and shaker um, in terms of the organ project um, back in the late 90s. And so we'll be hearing a little more of him and from him um, later on in the service. Now, as you figured out, when we have the congregational hymns, remember, you are all good musicians, singers. You sing best when you stand. So for every hymn, we want you just to stand up and just raise your voice um, in song with us. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. May you be blessed. And we will have just an amazing time together as we raise our voices in thanksgiving and in song. I too would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for coming out this evening and joining in this celebration. Uh, my name is Dr. Wendelin Monroe and I am professor of vocal and choral music here at Berman University. And this January will mark 48 years that I've worked with the choirs and the students here on the Hilltop. <laughs> It has been a joy to be here and to serve here at this university. It's hard to believe that 25 years have passed since the installation anniversary of our lovely Cassavant organ. Time has truly flown by. It is really unbelievable how fast it has gone. There was so much excitement on the campus when we were told we would be getting a new organ. We were wondering what the drawings of the front of the church would look like and we were deciding whether to solve problems like how much elevation should the choir loft have, um, how steep should it be. I remember Kenneth, um, I know you're watching, that we took measuring tapes and uh, we were figuring out the number of inches that had to be between the rows in the choir loft uh, to get uh, as many seats in as we were trying to uh, get. Um, we were also deciding whether to have chairs on the platform, whether to have bench seating with padded backs and seats, or just benches with padded seats and wooden backs, which you can see is what the choice was in the end. Various other questions were raised as to increasing the size of the stage, flaring the side walls out, uh, as opposed to the box effect that the choir was singing in. The flaring of the side walls helped to enhance the acoustics immensely. You can see pictures of the um, previous for, uh, front of the church uh, in the foyer. Uh, there's some pictures there uh, that show the development. Our organ professor at the time was Dr. Kenneth Logan, and he and I performed a lot of English choral music together, music by Vaughan Williams and Matthias and Herbert Howells and John Rutter, David Wilcox. And Dr. Logan wanted to be sure that the stops and the ranks of pipes that were chosen to make up the rich colors of the organ would especially enhance music of the English style and the French. Decisions had to be made as to what stops to choose. There were innumerable meetings for the organ. Dr. Tates was always there, Larry Herb, John McDowell, Kenneth Logan, and me, as well as members of the administration and others. We met on a very regular basis. And during our breaks and holidays, we were encouraged to fundraise, remembering uh, to visit friends and family and ask them to, ch to share in the vision of the new organ. The old organ was a Wix organ. Some days the organ would not turn on. Surprise. Other times in the church service, the organ would play a verse, a hymn, and then cut off for the second verse, and the organist would run over to the piano and continue the service from there. The pipes were just drying out, the glues were drying up, and the pitch was hard to maintain. And so the old organ was eventually dismantled. Some parts were sold, other parts headed to the dump, and a few of us 
grabbed a little memento for posterity's sake. <laughs> this is not a rolling pin. <laughs> this is a pipe, and it says on it, C, and it also says for the pedal, eight-foot pedal. So that's where it went. <laughs> So we have to play it as a final memorial <laughs> to the new organ. Anyway, that's the that's the I'd just like to take a moment to especially thank Dr. Wendy Markoski for sharing her talents and for breathing life into the organ. Uh, over the last 25 years. It has enhanced the worship services and the presentations, choral presentations and other presentations that have taken place here over the 25 years. Thank you so much, Dr. Markoski, and welcome to all of you. God picked me up like a pipe and breathed his breath into me. And my soul brought forth songs of joy. God picked me up and swung me like a bell. And my life rang forth a hundred prayers of praise.
Twenty-five years ago, I was visiting the campus. I lived in Calgary, but I was up here for the summer. And as I was wandering around the campus on a free afternoon, I came into the church, and it was chaos. I didn't know what was going on at the time, but I walked in, and they had ropes and tape and all sorts of things, and there were pipes scattered all over the floor where you're sitting. Little did I know at the time, because again, this was not my home church, this was not my community, but little did I know at the time the amazing transformation that was taking place in this sanctuary. I would later come here as a student and with the choir as I do now, sing with them to the sounds of the organ and the beautiful backdrop that it creates. And then I would come back and serve again and be part of the many gatherings and convocations and church services to which the organ would lend its beautiful sound. Most recently, I came to campus back in January to serve as the senior development officer, which I am told is really just kind of a fancy word for the big fundraising guy. Now, because I had some history with the campus, I started to dig through the archives and understand a little bit more about just what it was that I was part of not only from my time here as a student, but the rich history that this community has built since it was founded in 1907, and the church community as part of that. And wouldn't you know it, as I was going through the archives, I came across this box of boxes. And I opened this little box of boxes, and inside each of the boxes were these commemorative pins. And I thought, well, this is kind of a neat little feature. And then I looked closely at the date. Now remember, this is January. I looked closely at the date and I read, Organ Dedication, November 14th, 1998. And I did the math and I realized that it was the 25th anniversary of the dedication. And so I reached out to Dr. Markowski and I said, we should really maybe do something about this. And so the wheels began to turn. And that's what brings us here together tonight, is the result of all of that work that has been done. But if you, if you notice in the opening remarks in the, in the bulletin, this program is really an echo of the service that took place 25 years ago. The organ had been completed for a year by that point and was already in use, but they wanted to take time to have a special dedication ceremony. And the work went into putting that together. Our program tonight echoes that. Back then, they talked about a reason to rejoice. They talked about the vision, and you'll hear Dr. Logan shortly talk about the organ vision that was cast over 25 years ago. And they talked about the work that would need to go into it. And, and, and yes, there's all of the design and all of the, the technical aspects. But of course, as, as Dr. Markowski and Dr. Monroe shared, there was also the, the need to find people who believed in what this would represent and would be willing to support it financially. And so the work began to reach out to the donors and the supporters that would help make this possible. In the back of your program, you have a list of those donors as they appear on the plaque that is out in the foyer and will hang actually just over here. Interesting fact, because the donations kept coming in, the plaque was not properly completed at the time and ended up in storage for 25 years. And it was only when we began to work on this that, that Dr. Markowski said, I think I know where the plaque is. And we pulled it out and we updated it so that it now includes all of the donors from that original group. Now I want to just pause for a moment here and ask, are there any 
who are among that original group of donors who are here tonight. Would you just stand up so we can recognize you? We have a few here tonight, I know. Down in the front here, I know we have a couple. Of course, in 25 years, many of them have also passed on, but they made the contribution at the time knowing that the legacy would last far beyond their own years worshipping in this community. And that's a part of what brings me here tonight, because this is a living, breathing instrument. It came about as the idea and the vision of, of the, the faculty and staff here on campus, but it really came to life because of the people who were inspired to support the work. The word inspire itself means to breathe life into. And so those who have contributed over the years have been really the, the reason why the air flows into this organ. To breathe into brings this organ to life. And as a living entity, it continues like any living entity to need care, to need maintenance, to need support. And after 25 years, it has served so very faithfully. We were talking about this the other day. In many cases, if an organ is well maintained, it will outlive the building that houses it. And if you go to Europe today, you will find that there are organs that go back centuries. And so we want to just, again, give reason to rejoice for everyone who was inspired to give to help make this organ possible, not only in 1998 with the original facade and pipes, but the Shamad pipes that were installed about five years later. And, you know, sitting back, I, I will just say this, sitting in the congregation, you don't think these pipes are very large. But when you're sitting in the choir and you look up and you realize that these things are extending out four rows into the choir loft, this is, this is a powerful set of, of instruments. This is a powerful set of pipes. And then at the very top, you may not uh, be able to see it from where you sit, but there is the, the crowning jewel of this organ, which is the, I'm trying to remember how you pronounce it, Zimbelstar. It's a toy stop. For just a moment, It is not uncommon for many organs to remain incomplete for their lifetime. We are very proud to say that because of the inspiration of our donors and the people who believe in what this organ represents, this is one of the most complete organs that exists out there in terms of all of the pieces that have been put in. I don't know that there's much more that we could add to it. Dr. Markowski might have ideas. I don't know. But I just want to encourage you and to give thanks to everybody who has been part of this journey over the years, who has not only enjoyed, but has breathed life in with their support. And I would encourage you as well, as you enjoy the program this evening, to consider how you might be part of keeping this organ alive for another 25 years and beyond. As you look at the list of donors at the back of the program on the opposite page, you'll find that there's an opportunity for you also to be part of this legacy. And throughout the evening, if you're inspired, I just encourage you to take the time to think about how and what you might do to be part of that. So once again, we have so many reasons to give thanks. Each one of you sitting here is part of that. And we want to celebrate what God has done and look forward with joy to what will continue to be done as we lift our voices and breathe life in song.
want to beg your indulgence this evening as I was going over this psalm, these four verses, I realized that it wasn't very clear. So I got my Hebrew Bible down off from the shelf. <clears throat> and I have submitted to you my own translation based on years of working with this language to make it a little bit clearer. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. But day and night have no real speech, nor do they speak words aloud. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The Lord is near. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from their trouble. Therefore, hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. Lord, I long to be near you. From the ends of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Let me abide in your tent forever and find refuge under the shelter of your wings. So I will always sing praises to your name.
Dr. Monroe talked about when the Wix organ would occasionally just not play. It's actually funny that she talked about that because when I was at Andrews too many years ago now to recount, Dr. Logan was the resident organist at Pioneer Memorial Church and I remember one Sabbath at the end of the church service we had this beautiful majestic hymn ready to play and he sat at the console and he poised himself and he struck the keys and nothing happened. And the congregation paused and all kind of held their breath and he pulled a couple of stops and did a couple of things that only organists know how to do and he again with great uh, aplomb went to play and again there was silence. And without missing a beat, he slipped off, went round to the piano and sat down and played it just as majestically as he could on the piano. It takes a special kind of person to be an organist because you are doing so many things with so many moving parts at once. You need to have vision. You need to be able to see what it is going to look like at the end, even as you're looking at all of the parts along the way. And it was Dr. Kenneth Logan who first had the vision that he shared with this campus when he was here as the organist and music instructor. And in the years that have followed, he's been back a couple of times to play. When we had the first dedication service, the technology was such that he had a letter that he sent that somebody read. Nowadays, we have the capacity to do something a little bit more personal. And so here on the 25th anniversary of the organ that he was the mover behind, Dr. Kenneth Logan will share a few words with us as an act of commemoration for this event. Greetings on the occasion of a very special recognition of the organ at the College Heights Church, Berman University. It, in a way, hardly seems possible that 25 years and more have passed with what became in the day to be known as organ vision. I would very much like to be there for the uh, celebrations, but at this time, I would need to await a privilege of being back there potentially in the near future. But I'd like to share a few ideas thinking back on organ vision. One part of that is, of course, the word organ. And of course, an organ is simply an instrument able to produce tones. I would like to suggest that an organ can actually be an effective means of preaching in a church and that the idea of an organ as an instrument of worship and of proclamation is a very important part of the instrument at the College Heights Church. And what of the idea of vision? Yes, there was vision back in the day. There is vision of something becoming quite different from what was. There was vision of implementation. There was vision of a community. Noting back in the time that there are, there were, I should say, perhaps, and probably still are, I don't know, only two pipe organs in the immediate vicinity of the University College. CUC was in a community that at that time had, I think, about 200 churches. Maybe it's more now. But what an opportunity to be visionary, to say, if we have something that's relatively unique in our area, what can we do to draw people in who have a considerable liking or even love for music, perhaps even for singing, and have a vision of how we can draw them in to a worship experience at the College Heights Church? So there was vision. There was context, and I would just like to say that uh, short of naming so many people who are importantly a part of the vision, special appreciation to one who basically came on the scene after much of the vision had been put into place, but Dr. Wendy Markowski, because without someone with a considerable degree of musical sensitivity and training, to be there to actually carry on uh, the outgrowth, the outflux uh, of the vision. 
perhaps it would have been uh, not a vision realized in any significant degree. So that is a very special part of looking back on these 25 years, and Dr. Markowski has been there, of course, for approximately the 25 years. So, and to others who look forward with vision to the future, uh, I would like to give well wishes and speak with appreciation of having had opportunity to be part of a special vision at the College Heights Church, what then was CUC, and looking forward to the future for some visionary things that may yet happen in that context. Blessings, and perhaps I'll be up there in the near future to share in person. Twenty-five years ago, there was an act of dedication. With reflection and with a little bit of modification, it is now an act of commemoration. You can find it as the responsive reading in your bulletin, and I invite you to join with us as we share together in this act of commemoration. Praise the name of God. Sing praises to him. Praise God with the sound of the trumpet. Praise God with strings and pipes. Praise God with the organ. Almighty God, your people worship you with many voices and sounds. We come to you in times of sorrow and in times of joy. Today, we commemorate the dedication of this organ, for its role in the healing of life's discords, for how its sounds have lifted the depressed and comforted the sorrowing. As it serves in our worship, may we who are moved by its tones humble our hearts before your eternal mysteries, and may our souls be lifted to your abiding joy and beauty. Today we commemorate this instrument for your glory, that as its notes lift our spirits, so we may lift our hearts in praise and devotion to you. Move us to express the wonder, the power, and the glory of your creation in the music we make and the songs we sing. As in the past, years past, so for the years to come, may this instrument enable us to raise songs of praise and thanksgiving to the glory and glory of your name, until in your very presence we praise you through the ceaseless ages of eternity. Amen.
Come and proclaim. Come to the mountain of the Lord. Come to the place of God's presence. Let your hearts be filled with his glory and your mouth be filled with his praise. Proclaim the name of the Lord. Proclaim the good news to all the earth. The deserts glow with his majesty. The stars that show forth his light. The ocean depths revealing his greatness. The sun beaming forth his power. The hillsides wrapped in his joy. The meadows clothed in richness. The valleys so thick with grain that they laugh and sing. I invite you to join me in this litany by reading the bold print. It is a litany of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for all things that reveal your love. For the sun in the day and the stars in the night. God for the gifts of all who have made this church a place of worship. For the renovation committee, for the donors, the volunteers, and the carpenters. For the 
For the composers and musicians and the gift of song. Let us bow our heads and now receive this blessing from God's word. Be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord always in your hearts. Let us live in such harmony with one another through Jesus Christ, that together we may be with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God forever. Amen. Amen.